All right, this is a tapered curved spring, and we're going to build it in SOLIDWORKS. Now, I do a lot of certification content with SOLIDWISE, and this problem has relevance to two of the certification exams, and those exams are the CSWE, the Certified SOLIDWORKS Expert exam, where you'll have to create a curved helix, and the CSWPA surfacing, or the Advanced Surfacing exam, in which you might end up using something called intersection curves, which allows you to get a reference edge from two intersecting surfaces, or essentially just two surfaces that overlap. Now, down below in the description, there's going to be a link to download a free practice problem for the CSWE, which is fantastic because there's not a lot of material out there. I just finished the CSWE section for SOLIDWISE, so there's a full training course on SOLIDWISE.com. But if you want a free practice problem to kind of get a sense of the sort of problems you'll be seeing on the CSWE, the Certified SOLIDWORKS Expert, pop down below and you can download that absolutely free. Just have to pop over to SOLIDWISE.com, input your email, and you'll be good to go. With that being said, let's go ahead and model out this spring. So we're going to start with essentially a swept surface that's going to allow us to create a curved helix or it would allow us to create a curved helix if that's what we wanted but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new part this guy will be in inches and then I'm going to draw in a few things here and we'll start with an arc so that's gonna be the base of our curved spring and this is just going to be a 90 degree arc, so I'm going to make these horizontal to the center, make this vertical to the center, so we have that 90 degree arc. And then this is just going to be 3 inches. Now, in order to create our helix, or our helical surface, we're going to use this arc as a path, and then we're going to create a, another sketch here as the profile of a sweep. And basically for this, we can draw this on the top or right plane. If you draw this on the same plane, it's gonna come out with a kind of a weird geometry that isn't what we're looking for. So you want one of the planes that's normal to the front plane, so top or right. I'll go ahead and just draw this on the top. And then I'm just gonna draw a line out horizontally. And you can draw this line on either side. It can even be snapped with a midpoint in the middle. I prefer this way of doing it on the outside, but you can draw this on the other side as well. You could also draw it up here, it doesn't matter too much. And basically we're going to use the swept surface tool and within that tool there's something called twist along path or specify twist value for the actual sweep. And that'll allow us to actually twist this line around this arc. So if you don't have the surfaces tab activated you can just right click and turn that on, go to surfaces, and choose swept surface. So for this we're going to choose this line as the profile, this curve as the path, and if we just clicked OK here we would just have that half or sorry quarter circle. But what we want to do here is actually twist this around that initial arc. And I actually forgot the number of turns that I did, so I'm going to pop back in the other part and just quickly cheat and look at how many revolutions I had, which was five. So we're going to keep that same geometry. I'm going to go ahead and edit this feature. And if you go into the options, there's an option here, Profile Twist. If you're in a really old version of SOLIDWORKS, the option's called Twist Along Path. But here we're just going to specify Twist Value. For Twist Control, we're going to choose a number of revolutions. And in this box, we're just to put five. Now you can put whatever you want here. This gets a little messy if we go too high in number for those rotations. And this will also take a long time to rebuild in SOLIDWORKS. So if you put too many turns, this might end up crashing SOLIDWORKS, depending on your SOLIDWORKS setup. But you can see you can put in pretty much any value, as long as it doesn't overlap itself. And then click OK. So now we have something that looks like kind of one of those potatoes you get at a fair that they cut into spirals. And if we just wanted a curved helix, all we'd really need to do is use this edge and create a profile for a sweep. We might even be able to just jump straight into a sweep because we have that edge. If we go into the path, 
you can see you can use that edge, use a circular profile, and you'd have a curved spring pretty quickly there. But we're going to do a second operation here, which is to add that taper to this. And the way we're going to do that is by using a surface loft. And then we're going to intersect the two surfaces that result. So we're not modifying this surface at all. We're actually just creating a brand new surface. So on the top plane, I'm going to go ahead and draw out a circle. And this guy decided to make two inches in diameter, which is the same as that starting diameter of this helix. And then I'm going to go ahead and just hide this surface really quickly and show this initial arc. Because I want another plane to draw on here and I'm just going to use this point to do it. So we want essentially to loft this circle to a smaller circle and for it to kind of follow this arc here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the features tab, choose reference geometry, choose plane. And then if I want to create a quick plane to if I want to create a quick plane to sketch on, I can just click on this point and then click on this arc and it's going to create a plane that's normal to this arc. We could also use one of the base planes. So if we use the right plane here, chose reference geometry plane and clicked on this point, you'd get the same thing. Now on this plane, I'm going to draw a smaller circle. This one's going to have a half inch of diameter. And you want to be careful with this. Sometimes when you're in this view, you can't, well, in this view, actually, I can't snap to this point at all, I think. So if I turn this, you'll see this is underdefined. If you just drag the circle and control select this point, you can make these coincident and that should hold that in place. And then we're just going to make this half of an inch. So if you see the circle is still blue, you need to properly define that relation. Now for this, we're going to use a surface loft. And typically I actually use the boundary surface tool. If you watched any other surfacing videos, you're familiar with surfacing. Typically, you'll use the boundary surface tool because it's a more robust tool than the lofted surface. But in this case, the lofted surface has a option that the boundary surface doesn't have that we're going to use here. And that one's called centerline parameters. So lofted surface, we can come in, choose profiles. And you'll notice that when I choose centerline parameters, I'm just going to choose this initial sketch. So I'm not creating a new arc for this. I'm just reusing the arc by just showing it and then selecting it. So I'm going to choose this profile. And when we create a loft, typically we want to select on the same part of the circle to get these to line up properly. The other way you can do this where these typically always line up correctly is just to choose them in the feature history here. And that way these usually line up correctly. In this case, actually it didn't, didn't work at all, but I can go ahead and just drag this out. It doesn't matter too much. If I wanted this to be in a very specific point, I could split the circle, but I don't care too much about that being exact. Now the last thing for this loft is to add that center line. And instead of the center line, we could make both sides normal to these profiles and, would, and then would get a curved loft here. But in this case, it's easy to just choose this as a center line. And you can see it moves that whole surface over to follow this center line. So now I have this surface. I can go ahead and hide out this arc that's in there. And then if I go ahead and show that initial surface, I can see these are overlapping and there is essentially an edge that would be created if we cut using this. Now, one of the ways you can do this, you don't have to use the tool I'm going to use. It's called intersection curves. It's probably the easiest tool to use for this, but we could also do something like trim this, I think. So if we tried to use this as a trim tool and chose this, basically by trimming away that inside surface, we have now this inside edge that we can use. And essentially, we, we would just create a 3D sketch and, and then just do a convert entities to get that edge. But when I originally created this, I used a 
intersection curves, which I like to use. So I'll show you that as well. So that one, I actually don't know where that tool is. It used to be easier to find in earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS. I'm sure it's sitting there somewhere, or maybe I'm confusing it with another tool. But if you just search out in the commands, and go to intersection curve. If you choose these two surfaces, click OK, you'll see that it just creates that curve for you. And it creates the curve in a 3D sketch. So we're getting the exact same thing as if we were to trim this and then convert this over. So now I can go ahead and hide out these surfaces. I could delete them out if I wanted. And lastly here, I just need a profile for the sweep. Now SOLIDWORKS has circular profiles built into sweeps now. So I'm going to go ahead and just not draw out a profile because it doesn't matter. I have it in the sweep. And we can finish up the spring. So here if I just choose circular profile, I don't actually remember what the diameter was. So let's say probably a quarter of an inch, something like that. Maybe 0.3. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this method of surface sweeping the twist value is something you'll use on the CSWE. And if you are interested in the CSWE, once again, there's the download below. You can download a free practice problem and see if you have what it takes to solve a CSWE problem. With that being said, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more like it, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you want to see solved in SOLIDWORKS. What don't you know? What do you want to learn? Let me know and I look forward to hearing from you.